Joker greeting Cyberdogs and citizens of the Interbubs. This is Ren Diggity Dog coming at you from the Moleshire in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival Series. Sorry about that. I think I just jumped on all of your heads. How's everybody out there doing today, man? Hope you guys are having a fantastic day wherever you are on planet Earth right now. I've been spending my morning playing Minecraft Survival and I have been loving it, my friends. Last time we were together, we were working on the entrance into what is slowly becoming a mountain base that we call the Mole Hole. Inside of this giant chamber over here, we're going to be making a beautiful Minecraft base. On the outside, it's called the Mole Shire. We've got a storage hole. We've got a mine. We've got some food action going on up there. Slowly but surely, our world is being transformed. And at the moment, I'm focusing on the interior of our mountain base coming together real good last time we were together we were working on this uh, sort of design that I think is turning out really nicely for the interior of our mole hole castle it's looking really good I've made a few adjustments since we were last together so I've added this pillar in the center in between the log support beams so uh, the log support beams have a space of three blocks in between them and then in between that we've got a bit of chiseled stone over here uh, that has created another sort of support beam behind there and that's created a whole bunch of depth in side of the wall which I like a lot very very happy with us today my friends we're starting some exciting exciting stuff I need to dig out a giant chamber over here in the middle of the mole hole this is going to become our entrance lobby for our castle I want to have a really big entrance over here a giant lobby I want to make a 21 by 21 I've started mapping out the dimensions over here and as you can see man we have a ridiculous amount of excavation to do luckily we got a couple of really awesome diamond pickaxes to hand we've got Terra and this beautiful Fortune 3 pickaxe that we created in the previous episode. And this Fortune 3 pickaxe is going to help us out a lot. Not only is it going to get us a bunch of resources, but at the same time, it's going to allow us to repair Terra because Terra's got mending on her, right? So with the Fortune pickaxe, we can put Terra in our offhand and we can actually repair Terra uh, if we find coal like this, right? We can use some of that XP to repair our Terra pickaxe. Uh, so that's kind of fancy. That's kind of next level Minecraft jazz going on over here. I like it. Now, there's a couple of other really important things that we need to do in today's episode. Guys, it's going to be jam-packed. Hope you got a tasty beverage. Hope you got a crunchy snack. I've got a delicious cup of coffee over here. Give me one second. Mm. Beautiful. Uh, today, we've also got some other really important work to do, my friends. We are going to find for ourselves our very first pig in this Minecraft survival series. At the moment, we've got a few animals that we have domesticated. We've got a sheep called Victoria. We've got a cow called Minamu. And uh, there's a couple other animals that we still need to get for ourselves. A pig being one of them. And I've got a pretty cool name that I have decided for this particular pig. Connected to a story I would like to tell you about my holiday uh, in South Africa. So that's going to be absolutely awesome. We are also going to find a way today to automatically harvest sugarcane. And that makes me really excited. Every time I log into my Minecraft survival world, I do this. I go around the world picking up sugarcane and uh, it's kind of a tedious task. I'm a little bit tired of it right now and I would like to automate the production of sugarcane. And this has been inspired by uh, 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 one of you guys in the comments who told me that we can very easily set up a bit of a redstone farm that's going to automatically collect sugarcane for us. And sugarcane is actually a really important item in Minecraft. It is the basis for paper and of course with paper we make Make books and with books we make enchantments so we need to start collecting an insane amount of sugarcane and uh, we can do that automatically today so we got a lot of stuff to do today guys we're gonna find ourselves a pig we're gonna do a bit of redstone and it is gonna be freaking sweet Sabba digging it dogs we be cooking with gas today baby finally we are getting somewhere with the mole hole castle I've just excavated a giant 21 by 21 lobby inside of our mountain here's the center point which I've marked out using these cobblestone blocks and uh, I've also marked out where these passages are going to be right these passages are going to look exactly like this and uh, this one I guess will take us to the storage hole this one will take us up to the fields of the dog this one will take us who knows but it's going to be awesome and uh, in the very center of this lobby I want to make something really cool that's going to go all the way up from the base of the Molehole Castle all the way out into the open it's going to go all the way through the top of the mountain not entirely sure what I want to do yet but uh, we're going to come up with something really cool uh, but yeah looking pretty good I've managed to collect a bunch of resources here too uh, from this excavation which is excellent but we've got some more important things to do right now than dig holes in Minecraft my friends we need to find ourselves a pig 
And uh, we're going to go on a little bit of an expedition to uh, continue this episode. But before we do that, I need to name a name tag because we are going to be naming our pig today. A very special and uh, particular name. And we're going to be calling our pig Hell the pig. And uh, I'm going to explain exactly why in a moment. Uh, to catch a pig, though, we're going to need some carrots, aren't we? Uh, and we're going to need to go find a pig somewhere in the world. Hi, Victoria. What's cracking? I hope you're doing well over there, my young lady. Soon we'll get you into the mole hole, Victoria. Don't you worry. Just a few more days in the torrential rain of the mole shire and uh, you will be free. Um, yeah, let's get ourselves a carrot. All we're going to need is one carrot. And uh, if we can find ourselves a pig, we'll be able to lure that pig back into the mole hole uh, with the carrot. And I've got a plan for this. I want to maybe use uh, our brand new Mole Rail Incorporated railway system to maybe make our lives a little bit easier over here. Actually, let's pick up this minecart also. Um, and we can go on a little bit of a pig adventure, a pig hunt, uh, if you will, <laughs> for the remainder of this episode. Where is the sun? Okay, we still got a little bit of time to find Hell the Pig somewhere in the world of our Minecraft survival series. I think I know where we might be able to find one, though, and uh, I'm naming this pig Hell after a very cool person that I met on my holiday in South Africa. I was uh, hanging out with my nephews uh, on the beach one day, and uh, we were digging a giant hole. And they had a friend that I met called Hell, and uh, this young man was a very cool guy, and he had never watched a Ren Diggity Dog video before, which kind of made me angry. It kind of upset me. I was like, hell, my dude, you need to watch some Ren Dog videos. And uh, <laughs> what Hell did for the next few days was binge watch a whole bunch of Ren Dog videos. He had a Ren Dog marathon, baby. Hashtag Ren Dog marathon in the comments if you've ever had a Ren Dog marathon yourselves. Uh, anyway, the next time I saw Hell a couple of days later, he had watched something like 15 episodes of this Minecraft survival series. He was almost caught up. He knew all about Maximus. He knew all about the animals and all about the cool things around our world. And uh, I was talking to him about maybe finding ourselves a pig uh, in the world. And he told me that there is a pig somewhere around spawn. He remembered at some point in one of the videos seeing a pig somewhere in this region over here, which I thought was really, really sweet. And it's one of the things that I love most about being a YouTuber, guys, is being able to meet you guys in the world and uh, talking about the series that we do together and getting really excited about what we do in Minecraft. There it is! There is a pig over here! Nice! There is actually a pig. Welcome, brand new pig friend, to the Cyberdog Nation family. You are going to be named Hell the Pig. Boom! <laughs> and we're going to get you back into the Mole Shire right now. Come with me, Hell. Follow me, my friend. Yep, the sun's going down. We need to we need to hustle a little bit, Hell. Come on, my man. We need to hustle. You need to move your little pig butt. You're not moving fast enough for my liking. We need to get to the railway line as fast as we can. <laughs> but yeah, guys, one of my favorite things about being a Minecrafter is being able to share these sort of experiences with you guys out there. Uh, it is always a massive joy for me when I meet you guys in real life. And uh, there's so much happiness and so much passion about the work that I do. And oh, man, it's just the most rewarding thing ever. So in um, I guess in honor of the young man I met on my holiday in South Africa called Hell who had a Ren Dog Marathon. I'm going to be naming this little pig after him. Let's see if we can get him onto the railway line. Hey Hell, get onto the railway line, my dude. No, get onto the railway line. Uh, oh, he won't actually cross the railway line? That's kind of interesting. Can I get him into a, a, a minecart though? Let's have a look. Get in there. Okay, he's in. Nice. Hell, get yourself back to the mole shire quick, fast, and in a hurry, my little friend. The sun is going down. The undead are coming for you. They want to eat your bacon like nobody's business. Sabah digging it, dogs. It's that time in the series once again that we need to prepare our faces for some potential palmage. Because we're about to get technical up in here and do a little bit of redstone magic. It's going to be awesome. Hell is safe and sound in the mole shire, chilling in the minecart. Cart. We'll leave him there for now until we find a more suitable place for him to live. But let's get ourselves into the, the mole hole, guys, because we're going to make ourselves a sugarcane farm and it is going to be 100% automatic and it is going to be really easy to make and uh, really cheap to make too. When I say easy to make, 
easy for the rain dog, I guess, but I'm probably going to derp it up at some point. So please do forgive me if there are some technical errors in the next 10 minutes or so. Let's start off with a little bit of an infinite water source over here. I prepared a little hole in the side of this mountain where we're going to be installing our sugarcane farm. And uh, we're going to be using the mechanics of sugarcane to actually create an automatic sugarcane farm. If we can get this done, it is going to be awesome. Now, we know that sugarcane has to grow on sand. And on top of that, it has to have some water next to it, right? So we've got to remember that. That's where we're going to be starting, right there, with the water and the, the sand and the sugarcane. And of course, the way the sugarcane works is that every now and then it grows a little bit taller and it grows a little bit taller. And in fact, it, gr it can grow up to four blocks high, I think, uh, before it stops growing. Now, we need to find a way to automatically harvest this sugarcane when it grows. And the good news is that in Minecraft, we have got a very interesting little redstone block called an observer. And to make an observer, we need some cobblestone, some redstone, and some nether quartz. I've just been to the nether to get ourselves a, a little bit more quartz. We're going to make ourselves an observer block. We're also going to make ourselves a sticky piston, or a, a piston rather, uh, which actually isn't here at the moment, which is kind of strange. It should be here. Uh, but a piston we make like a so, I believe, with a little bit of iron, a little bit of redstone. Is it the other way around, I think? Yeah, there we go. We're going to make ourselves a piston. And we're also going to make ourselves a couple of hoppers over here. So let's get a couple of hoppers in the belly too. Uh, there is the recipe for hoppers. I think we'll probably need one or two of those. There we go. And we're also actually going to need uh, some rails also, <laughs> which I completely forgot to get. I was so prepared for this in my mind, but apparently I've completely derped up. So let's head back into the storage hole, get ourselves a rail, and uh, then we can start working on the sugarcane farm. Uh, now, this particular farm has been inspired inspired by the comments of one of you guys do i not have any rails oh my goodness we have no rails at the moment uh, we've used them all for the uh, the mole rail incorporated haven't we <laughs> yeah let's just make ourselves 16 rails over here uh, but yeah this particular farm has been inspired by one of you guys i read a comment saying that ren you can actually make some really cheap farms in your world that'll automatically harvest sugarcane and automatically harvest cactuses also uh, and we'll be working on a cactus farm at some point too and i thought maybe what we could do is we can incorporate this beautiful, uh, very compact little sugarcane farm into our build, right? So what I'm thinking is we're going to have a sugarcane farm in each of these positions that I've marked out in the very central lobby uh, of the, the Molehole Castle. And of course, sugarcane is only going to grow if we are loading the chunk, right? So as we're going to be spending a ridiculous amount of time in the mole hole, this is going to be the perfect place to actually grow sugarcane. And if we have, what, two, four, six, eight little sugarcane farms going, we're going to generate a ridiculous amount of sugarcane over time. So that's kind of exciting. Now, we're going to need to do a little bit of work over here, though, to get this thing set up. We're going to start off by making a way to actually grow this sugarcane, right? So to kick things off, let's get ourselves a little bit of water over here and let's find a way to get this sugarcane growing i kind of want the uh, outside of this little sugarcane farm to be on this line over here which is going to be the wall of our lobby so let's use polished andesite for this because i like the way that polished andesite looks i think that looks kind of cool it's going to suit our build quite nicely uh, but this is kind of where we want the sugarcane to be growing we want the sugarcane to be growing in this block over here right so that's where we're going to be plonking the sand beautiful let's get the sugarcane down there uh that's going to be oh yeah we need some water though don't we okay so let's get a bit of a water source behind that sand and that's going to start growing some sugarcane beautiful now we're going to find a way to grow the sugarcane and then break the sugarcane, but we're going to have to collect this sugarcane automatically, right? And we're going to be doing that using a hopper minecart. And uh, we're going to make a hopper minecart with, of course, a minecart and a hopper. But we're going to have to find a fairly clever way to collect this sugarcane. Let's just get rid of this water source. And what we're going to do, actually, is we're going to set up a hopper minecart underneath the sand. So when that sugarcane lands on the sand block, it's going to be collected by the hopper minecart. So let's get a bit of a rail down there and that should allow us to actually put the sand on top of the rail like a so. That looks pretty good and then what we can do is we can stick the minecart with the hopper on that rail underneath it and check this out right. If a bit of sand lands on the, or if a bit of sugarcane rather lands on the sand that hopper minecart's going to suck it up right. Beautiful. Now how do we get the sugarcane out of the hopper minecart? Well we're going to use uh, some hoppers to suck the 
items out of the hopper minecart. So let's use a couple of hoppers and let's get a chest here also. Let's get a chest ready. Um, I guess what we're going to have to do at some point is find a way to filter all of the sugarcane into the storage hole. Maybe what we can do is we can drop the sugarcane into an aqueduct that will then send the sugarcane into that other aqueduct that we made uh, and into the item elevator in the storage hole. But we can figure that out at some other point. What we're going to do here though is stick a couple of hoppers going into this chest and uh, into that hopper minecart. Now, what should happen theoretically is if sugarcane drops on the sand, it's going to get sucked up by the hopper minecart and then sucked up by these item hoppers and it should be ending in this chest, which it currently isn't. So I've actually done this completely wrong. Hang on. I know what I've done wrong over here, right? What we need to do is we need to lower all of this stuff down by one. I told you there'd be some face palming, guys. That's first face palm of this technical part of the episode. There we go. Face palm has been applied. Let's go one block down and then get all of the hoppers set up again. What we're going to do is we're going to set up that rail on top of a hopper, right? So we're going to have three hoppers here. That hopper's going to go in there. And this is where we're going to be setting up the railway line on top of that hopper, right? And let's make for ourselves another hopper rail, rail cart. Oh, oops. Uh, we're going to have to make a few more items over here. Oh, my goodness. I thought I was so organized, guys, but apparently I'm not. Let's make another chest and uh, another hopper over here. Beautiful. And uh, this is going to become our hopper minecart thingy. Let's stick that on the rail. Now, theoretically, if we've got the sand above that hopper minecart or minecart with hopper or whatever it's called, now... The sugar cane will get sucked up by the hopper minecart, pushed down into the hopper chain below, and we should see that ending up in the chest. Yes, beautiful. Let's just do one more test over here. That's looking really good. Beautiful. Okay, so that's working. Nice. Now we can stick the water over here, and that sand is blocking the water, so it won't damage any of our redstone down there. That's looking pretty good, and this is where the sugar cane is going to start growing. Okay, so we've got the initial setup for the sugar cane farm done. Now what we got to do is get the actual mining bit completed. Okay. Okay, this is where it gets really, really interesting. Now, we're going to be using this observer block that we created in a moment, uh, or a moment ago rather, to, well, observe when this sugarcane grows. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold shift and right click on that sugarcane, and you saw a little bit of a pulse happening there, right? Now watch this. When this sugarcane grows, boom, did you see that little redstone pulse? That's because this observer block, you can see it's got a little face, is looking at the block directly in front of it, and when something happens in front of the face of the observer block, it creates a redstone pulse right? Kind of curious, kind of interesting. Now, check this out. What we're going to be doing is installing that piston that we created a little bit earlier right in this position over here. And here is the idea uh, for this particular farm. Let's just make ourselves a button very quickly and uh, I can show you exactly how this works. When the sugar cane grows in front of this piston, what we would like to do is trigger this piston to break the sugar cane. You see that? The piston breaks the sugar cane, and if we have some blocks like this, right, if we actually uh, wall this off correctly like so, when that sugar cane breaks, it is going to end up on top of... Oh, okay, hang on. <laughs> Let's try that one more time. Let's build this up just a little bit more. Uh, what's going to happen, of course, when that sugar cane breaks is that it is going to be collected by the hopper minecart when it lands on top of that bit of sand. You see that? There we go. So that is the way that the farm is going to function. Now, we need to get this piston triggering whenever this sugarcane grows to a certain height and that's where we're going to be using our observer block to actually do this right so let's install our observer block over here looking at that sugarcane and what we want to do is just put a little bit of redstone coming out of the butt of this observer block onto this block here which is behind the piston and of course that is going to power this block which is going to power the piston when the sugarcane grows so check this out right if the sugar crane if the sugarcane grows grows naturally the moment it grows in front of the observer block face boom that piston is going to get triggered and uh, that sugar cane is going to be collected by the hopper minecart below shall we try that one more time because uh, i actually collected the sugar cane there but boom there we can see the piston went and actually this farm is really good because the piston is over here and it's only going to harvest that sugar cane when the sugar cane grows to three uh, blocks high right so every single time this farm triggers it is going to collect two sugar cane for us which is pretty freaking awesome and that is it i mean that is as simple as it gets to create a sugarcane farm in minecraft it is a completely passive farm it's a lossless farm too because those sugarcane blocks that are being broken are only going to land on that sand and uh, that's going to be collected by our little hopper chain down there 
I guess what we would like to do though is actually see this happening, right? We want to see it going down because I think it looks kind of cool. So maybe what we can do is just add a little bit of, hmm, maybe we can use iron fences for this. That could be pretty cool. Yeah, or iron bars rather. Yeah, let's make some iron bars like this and to try and keep in the same sort of design style as the Mulhall Castle. Let's put some iron bars in there. That looks kind of cool. So now that sugar cane is now going to grow naturally and whenever it gets to three blocks high, the observer block is going to see that, trigger the piston and collect two uh, sugar canes for us in our farm. And what we can then do, of course, is find a way to get all of those sugar canes into the storage hole at some point. And of course, what we need to do now is set up another eight of these bad boys all of the way around the lobby of the mole hole. And over the next hundred hours while we are here playing Minecraft Survival, we will be automatically harvesting sugarcane. And that, my friends, is super freaking awesome. And we only had one major face palm for this particular technical build. So that makes me a super happy rending and a dog, baby. Okay, this is kind of interesting, guys. I've been working on a secondary sugarcane farm over here. And what I've realized is that we could actually feed a single chest with both of these farms. And that means eventually what we could do is just have a singular point on each corner of our lobby that is going to be sending that sugarcane into the storage facility. So that's kind of cool. I also want to do something here just for the last part of today's episode, just to spruce the place up a little bit. I thought maybe we could try get a little bit of light in here, right? So let's get a redstone torch up there and a redstone lamp above the sugarcane. That should look pretty cool. Actually, we could probably bring it down even one more block over here. So what happens if we did this? Let's put a, a redstone torch over here, put our redstone lamp like so, and then cover that up uh, with the polished andesite and a little bit of the fence edge. That's actually way better, right? Now we can nice and clearly see what is going on inside of that chamber. Very, very nice. Let's do exactly the same over here. So let's get a redstone torch and a redstone lamp up in this business like a so. There we go. Uh, and this is not quite working the way that I wanted to. There we go. So we've reset the farm now. Uh, that should start automatically harvesting now. And uh, let's get polished andesite up there and a few of these bars in front. Looking really good. And now we've got two working sugarcane farms that are going to be feeding this chest over here while we are in the mole hole castle loading this particular chunk. We can cover all of that up and know in our hearts that these two things are now working. Well, hopefully that they're working. I'm pretty sure I've set them up correctly. Uh, anyway, that's about all the time that I have for today, guys. I'm probably going to spend a bit of time setting up the remaining six of these sugarcane farms in this lobby. And next episode, we can start working a little bit more on the interior of the mole hole. But I hope you have enjoyed this technical episode. I hope you learned something. How to make a nice, super cheap, super easy, face palmless sugarcane farm. If you don't face palm like me, though, of course, you should be able to get it done quite easily. And the most expensive item in the whole farm is a bit of nether quartz. So that's kind of awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. Mad love to hell the pig who has just joined the cyber dog nation my friends if you enjoyed it you know what to do you smackity smack that like freaking button if you haven't subscribed yet well you hit that freaking subscribe button rendigity dog sign it out we'll smell you all in the next episode